How's it going guys? Welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. My name is Jake. Chris is over here on the tractor. Um, he just scooped up one of the IBC tote lids of scrap that um, we typically burn off the Easton made 2228. Um, it produces a lot of scrap with that pizza box wedge. Um, we are burning some of it up right now, but um, we're, I haven't had a chance. It poured rain all day yesterday, which was Sunday, the day after we did all that splitting into the dumpster can. Um, so I wasn't able to, didn't get a chance to burn it all up. So we're just dumping it in our pile and uh, I have a spot that I can pay to dump it. It's like $10 a yard, but it's not too bad um, down the street. But uh, anyway, I posted that video on Sunday of us splitting into the dumpster can and using the bucket to load IBC totes. And guys, we asked for feedback. We got a ton of feedback. That video is still ranked number one. We got like well over a hundred comments on it of all different ideas, Some, a, a lot of repeat of, of similar ideas. Um, I think the idea that Chris and I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, like best so far is the idea of just buying a second dumpster can and putting it in with the door facing out underneath the conveyor um, because that way we wouldn't tie up the one dumpster can that I currently have, we, which we also use for wood chips and stuff for and logs for, for tree jobs. And if we had a second can just dedicated under there, not only would it serve as a bulk bin that we could move around, but I could also use it as a second dumpster can when and if I needed. Right? It was, that was kind of what we were talking about? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I don't know what kind of can we're going to get, whether it's going to be an open can or a enclosed can for like a chip box. Right. Um, that way it's a little bit more suited for what we need in the field and just use the regular red can here or if we're yeah. going to get the, the full open can. But. Yeah, there, there was a couple different ones on Facebook Marketplace. I messaged a couple guys, um, so I'm waiting for some responses back. But uh, I think if we were able to get a chip box one, that would be ideal. It might be a little bit more expensive and we just use the red one you know, over here. Um, but so far we, we like that idea because it would, it would allow us to uh, split a bunch of wood. Um, it would allow someone to simultaneously load totes if, if, you know, need be. It would keep the wood up off the dirt and everything. And we wouldn't have to pour a whole slab out here that would only serve as a firewood bunker. You know, if I, you know, like I said, get a second can, I can also, you know, rent that dumpster can out to somebody if need be. Um, so, that being said, thanks for all the feedback. You can see over here, we got a bunch of chunks and off cuts and like gnarly crotchy pieces um, that we have to split up for both mine and Chris's firewood now that he has a wood stove as well. Um, this stuff will probably be for next year. But we slipped in the tall four-way wedge for the first time. We've never used this thing. I think it's gonna be perfectly suited for these nasty, gnarly crotches. I don't even know how many crotches are in this birch piece. One, two, three, four, five or something. So we'll see how it does on that piece. Um, but we got some other you know, chunks and stuff and all the off cuts that came off the brute force processor while we had it. So um, I'm curious to see how the four-way wedge does. Me too. It, uh, the the four-way served us well on the rugged made. Right. Um, this so one's far, a lot bigger. This one is a lot bigger. <laughs> so far, the pizza wedge has been our favored wedge. Yeah. Uh, but throwing this in is, is going to be nice. A nice change of pace. Yeah, it'll go fast. Like for us, we don't really care how small these pieces are split. As long as they're split, so they dry a little faster. Um, and yeah, I think it should work out pretty well. So here we go.
So guys, I'm just gonna let this run here. Um, that way you can see in real time, you know, kind of what I'm doing. Uh, some of these pieces are more gnarly than others. As you can see, one of the big advantages to the tall four-way as opposed to just a regular four-way is that you can drop those wings down below the, uh, you know, the side log catch or log cradle, I think Easton May calls it. Um, and, and you can essentially just use that taller um, upper portion of the wedge as your, your standard single way wedge to just split it in two pieces if need be. Here, you know, this is one of the first pieces we're running through, so I'm just kind of getting accustomed. You can see Chris is kind of helping me sort the pieces, the ones that are too big to be re-split and, and pull them back, put them on that log, log lift because obviously you don't have the advantage of the pullback arm like you have on the box wedges. Um, I will say I am editing this video the following day and you will see the amount of nasty crotchy pieces that we split and I am sore. <clears throat> I think I address it at the end of the video, but Chris, I think, saw the amount of work it was taking for one man to do it and he opted to film <laughs> with the handheld camera um, and let me kind of, you know, just show what it takes for one person to do this. And it's definitely a lot of work. I think it probably would have been easier if I was standing on the opposite side of the machine, um, basically opposite the log lift, but then I would have had to walk all the way around to load the wood out of the baskets. If we had plan this out a little bit better I think we next time we'll probably move the baskets of all the cutoffs over to the other side of the machine that way I don't have to reach over the log lift but it was nice kind of having that table right there in front of me to put the, the bigger pieces on and be able to stand right there because they weren't all you know uniform pieces some of them wanted to fall off and you'll see me uh, time after time you know picking pieces up that that fall off and stuff like that um, all in all, very impressed with the four-way wedge, or the tall four-way wedge, rather. I think it is perfectly suited for this application. Would I use it daily to produce, you know, the bulk of my firewood that I sell? No, absolutely not. If, if I did, I would be expending a lot more energy than is necessary, especially if you have nice wood. But uh, when you have that nasty, gnarly, crotchy stuff, it kind of helps having that single way wedge to work around the knots and you know split them in half as opposed to you know trying to go right through them you know with, with the grain direction the wrong way or in the wrong orientation so with that i'll let this clip kind of play out and you'll just see you know the amount of wood and the quality wood that we were making out of some of these really nasty gnarly pieces hope you guys enjoy
right here you're going to see the conveyor stops for a second. Um, that was just because one of these chunks, you know, being that they're so oddly shaped and, you know, some of them kind of small and don't really have the length of normal firewood, a chunk got stuck in between the conveyor chain and the beginning of the grizzly bars. So you can see I'm just kind of reversing the conveyor here. It fell right out and then I, you know, got it going again. Um, this happened a couple times throughout the splitting process. It, it really was no big deal. The detent on the conveyor immediately kicked off preventing any damage or you know breaking up the chain or coming off the sprockets and we were right back to work as you can see.
All right, guys, that, uh, that was probably only about an hour that it took us to do that, but boy, does that box wedge with the pullback arm spoil us. Now, granted, that probably wouldn't have been quite as terrible had they have been like regular cut firewood offs. rounds or right. like cutoffs, but that some of that stuff was pretty nasty. Some of that was like some really big pieces that I would normally give to my buddy with the boiler, but I was kind of saving them um, because this is the first time, like I said, that we've tried using this tall four-way wedge. Um, and the tall four-way wedge worked really well. I mean, I think that was just about as easy as you could get splitting disgusting wood <laughs> like that. Yeah, I don't all, know of any wood. other machine that's gonna handle that wood, do all that wood. We filled up, what, three and a little yeah, bit three, more? three and like, a little bit more. Totes. And I mean, we did that quick, and I was splitting it basically by myself. Chris was helping, you know, uh, feed the log lift now and then, and kind of max, you know, arrange the totes, but Normally, you have the hard job cutting and moving the rounds and stuff, but today, I really, uh, I, I think you had the easy job and I had the harder job. Oh, very easy job. I was just watching you struggle. Yeah, you were like, filming, ah. did a couple shorts. I was like, yeah. how many shorts is this guy gonna, gonna film today? As many as I need to stay away <laughs> from that stay, splitter. Yeah. <laughs> it looked miserable. I had a feeling that's what you were doing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that tall four-way wedge is awesome. It, uh, it's really wide. So even if the pieces, you know, splay out like they tend to do, uh, you know, when you're splitting nasty, gnarly crotches and stuff, it, it's wide enough where it still splits it four ways if you have it lined up. And if you have a really gnarly piece, you could drop it all the way down and just use it as a regular single way wedge and it'll split it into two pieces. Absolutely no problem. We had a couple real big, they were like, what were they, pin oak? Yeah. Uh, big, yeah. long rounds. They'll be good for our new wood-burning inserts that can take up to 24-inch wood. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I, I, it, I had trouble just rolling it onto the log lift. Yeah. It, was, it was a big, gnarly crotch piece. Um, and I definitely should not have loaded that into the basket like No, I did. <laughs> loading it into the basket with the Cormidi and the grapple may have been easy at the time, but getting it out was a little bit different of <laughs> a story. But, you know, you live and learn. Um, we got three totes, so that'll be good stuff for us to burn probably next year or, you know, maybe even towards the ed end of the winter. A lot of that stuff, you know, wasn't super big, so it was already cracked and checked. You know, we were just splitting it up to make it fit in the, the wood-burning stoves and the inserts a little bit better. Um, but I was impressed. You know, this machine, 2228, has a lot of power. Yeah, I was, I was watching some of those like gnarly crotchy pieces, especially that river birch piece that had like the yeah, five like or six. Five. It, it just walked right through that. Pushes it didn't right seem through to it. have any issue. It didn't skip a beat. I, I think <laughs> the nice part about this four-way wedge is the amount of offset there is between the primary cutting edge and the secondary cutting edges. Yes. Because it really allows that wood tension to separate and split and relax. Mm -hmm and then it goes through another set of, of uh, blades. Right, yeah, I mean, that the, the, the horizontal pieces, which would split it in from two to four, are probably set back a good four or five inches. So it, like Chris said, really um, you know, splits it in half before it's splitting it in four, unlike some other wedge designs that I've seen. So um, although we're probably not gonna be using the tall four-way on a daily basis, we'll probably use it a few times a year and if you guys are in the market for an Easton-made log splitter and um, you're thinking about, you're kind of teetering on the fence about a tall four-way wedge, if you split up nasty, gnarly tree service, wood, crotches and stuff like that, I'd highly recommend getting it. You know, use your box wedge for all the nice straight stuff, put all the, the nasty stuff to the side and you can power right through it, you know, in an afternoon like we did here. Um, we had about probably like three totes worth of yeah. of crotches and stuff we had about a totes worth just on the ground so um yeah i'm happy with it that being said awesome machine i'm glad we got that done so uh as always guys if you like the video give it a big thumbs up if you haven't done so already click that subscribe button down below questions comments feedback throw it down in that comment section but for now i'm jake and i'm chris this is dude ranch diy thanks so much for watching see you guys here next time Once it's going, it's nice.